In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make a Splatoon poster in SFM, and I'm gonna cover everything you need to know while also keeping it short and simple, well, as best as I can. And I'm not gonna waste any more time, so let's just get into it. So after you've downloaded SFM and booted it up, uh, you'll get to this screen, and here you can name your session, and it doesn't matter what you name it, but as long as you can remember it. And I like to name my sessions by the date I started to work on them, like here. But for this video, I'm gonna name it... Pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> and then just click create. So now we're here and the first thing you probably want to do is change the layout. As you can see, I have two viewports and you probably only have one. And that's because you're most likely using the default layout. And if you want to change it, just go to windows, layout, and here's sound editing. And I'm not editing sound, it's just uh, I like the layout. Here's the default and here is the sound editing layout. So to begin with, you probably want to go to the workshop and uh, search for Splatoon Enhanced, which is uh, the Splatoon models, and also some kind of Splatoon map if you want that. And it's very easy to search up stuff on the workshop. Just scroll down, visit this workshop, search for, I don't know, Apple, and then just subscribe. There you go. Then you'll get this window and just click OK. There we go. So let's say now you have the enhanced inklings or octoling models or both and also a splatoon map. So now we're gonna right click here and click load map and also click rescan. So uh, it scans through everything again to see uh, if you have downloaded something new. So now we're gonna search for a splatoon map. So I'm gonna search for um, Wahoo World. Uh, day. So then just wait for it to load. There we go. Uh, before doing anything, uh, we're gonna add a camera. So click on the plus up here or right click here and create animation set for new camera. So now we have a camera and we're gonna utilize both the viewports. So we're gonna set this to the work camera, so switch work camera. And we're gonna set the second viewport to camera one. So now we have our work camera here where we can like fly around and work on stuff. And uh, the second viewport for uh, viewing how the poster will look like. And also to move around, you have to hold down left click and then use your mouse and also use WSD to fly around. And you can go up with Z and down with X. And also you can hold shift to fly faster and control to go slower. So now we're gonna find a good spot to be in. And I think, uh, I think this can be an interesting spot. So now we're gonna get our camera one as well. If we try to left click here, it doesn't work because you have to be in the motion editor. But now it still doesn't work because you have to select it as well. So now you can move it. So you can see on the work camera that we're moving the camera. So it's right here now. And also you can see it's quite zoomed in. So we can fix that by scrolling. So I'll put it here for now and then I'll tweak it later. So now I have our spot here and now we're gonna add an inkling or octling. To do that we have to go here and click on the plus or right click again and create animation set for new model. And here we can search for every model we have and once again we can rescan just to be on the safe side. And now we're gonna search for uh, let's say inkling girl and for boy it's just boy and octling is well octling. So here we have a bunch of models pretty much every variation of hair and uh, eye combo. But as you can see, it says props Splatoon 2, and that's because uh, these are only from Splatoon 2. If you want the Splatoon 3 hair, you also have to get another model from the workshop. If you want to do that, don't close SFM, just leave SFM here, go to the workshop, search for Splatoon 3, and then get the Splatoon 3 inklings and or octolings, and then come back here, click rescan, then you'll have them here. But still follow along with this video. So we're gonna go with, uh, let's say, yeah, this one. So now we have an inkling here and the eyes are kind of messed up So we're gonna select it here in the list and go down here to eyes up down and then we can adjust it There we go. So now I want to customize her and give her some clothes and maybe change the color of her hair and whatever uh, So we're gonna start with the hair. So if you want to change uh, the hair color you right click add override materials right click again show an element viewer model expand materials and go uh, here m team color hair 3 td and here and here you can click on the color and change it i want to match the eyes so maybe something like not too uh, cyan maybe maybe still more to the blue uh, side yeah like that and then as you can see there's still some pink in it that's because you can see uh, this one changes uh, the other uh, color here you can see it changes the other one so then we can have some kind of cool gradient if you want to do that which I actually kind of want to do. So I'm going to put this as cyan and then make this one uh, more dark blue, I guess. I think that looks pretty neat. So then we can uh, copy the color. So right click and copy. Then go to here, Inkling Girl Brow, which is the eyebrows. 
and then just paste it here. So we get the same color. So now we can go back to animation set editor. So now I'm going to show you how to add the Splatoon 3 hair. Once again, the plus, new model. So now I'm going to assume you went to the workshop and got the Splatoon 3 models. Click rescan and now search for SP3 hair. So here we'll get all the different Splatoon 3 hairs. And also one thing, if you want the Splatoon 3 models, like the Inkling models, SP3 Inkling, but why we're not going to use them in this video is because they have some issues with the clothing, so they'll just make things complicated. And I also kind of prefer the enhanced models, so we're gonna use them instead. But anyway, search for SP3 hair, and then you can pick the one you want. And I'm gonna go with this one, so open it. So now we're gonna hide uh, this hair by right clicking on the model, set body groups, hairstyle, and click none. There we go. And it's still kinda messed up here, so we need to do more. Here, ponytail, none. So now, since it's not completely compatible, it's kinda finicky, but I'm gonna guide you through it. So, expand both of these, body on the inkling, and unknown on the hair, and then drag this bip head on top of the hair root here, then select hair root, and go up here, and uh, drag this zero slider to the right. Now it's in place, but it has the wrong rotation, so we need to fix that. So have the head root selected still, then select the rotate tool, and now we're gonna rotate it. And this is quite finicky, but give it some time and you'll be able to do it. Uh, somewhere here, I think. If you look closely, you can see it's kind of floating on top, so we need to also drag it down. So pick the move tool, and then drag it down. Somewhere here, I think is good. Uh, the thing is, as it's not compatible, it's not gonna fit the head entirely. So if we go back here, you can see it's kind of messed up. But you're not gonna see the back anyway, so it's fine. And if you are gonna see the back in your poster, you can just adjust it accordingly. So you can do like something uh, like that. Boom. But we're not gonna have that, so Control Z, which is undo. And I'm gonna be happy with this. So now we can collapse this. And now we also probably want to change the color of the hair. So we're gonna right click, add override materials, right click again, show an element viewer, model, materials, and here. And if you still have it copied, you can just right click and paste it. And here are the dots again, which you can adjust if you want to. I actually kind of want them darker instead and make this kind of brighter. So yeah. And now since the eyebrows don't match, I'm gonna copy this color, go back, right click on the inkling, show an element viewer, model, and uh, go here, brow, and paste it in. There we go. Okay, it's kind of it's kind of bright, so I'm gonna bring it slightly down. There we go. Then go back to animation set editor, and now the hair is done. So now we probably want to add some clothes. So then once again you have to go to the workshop and search for like Splatoon clothing or or something like that, and then come back here. So now right click, model, rescan again, and search for Splatoon. Uh, we're gonna start with the shirt, so we're gonna search for clothing. Maybe a t-shirt, so t-shirt. What about this one? So now we have a shirt, and to attach it to the model, it's quite simple actually. You just have to drag the inkling on top of the t-shirt, then select the t-shirt, and drag the zero slider to the right. There you go. And if you want to change the skin of the shirt, because most clothing has some kind of variation, so right click, set skin, and here, you can see. Hmm, nah, I think I want the default one. There we go. So now we're gonna add some shoes. So once again, right click, new model, and search for Splatoon uh, shoes. Uh, what about high tops? So then, once again, the inkling on top of the shoes, select the shoes, zero slider to the right, there we go, easy as that. And then if you want to, you can change the skin here. Uh, and also, on uh, pretty much every model, you can, once again, add override materials. Show an element viewer, model, materials. And this has a dedicated uh, thing for recoloring it, but if it didn't have it, uh, so let's say you have only this skin and it looks like uh, this, you can right click on it, add attribute and color, and then type in dollar sign color, then it'll turn black, but you can add your color on top of it, which is kind of neat. But I don't want to do that, so I'm gonna delete it. I'm gonna set this skin 
and recolor it to match the inkling. <laughs> I want the entire inkling to be blue. Okay, I think that's fine. Then go back, and there you go. And I think I also want to give her some kind of hat or, or beanie or something. So I'm gonna once again right click, new model, search for Splatoon, headgear. I'm gonna go with... Uh, I don't know, I'm gonna search... I'm gonna search through these. Actually, I'm gonna go with this cap. <laughs> I found one good immediately, nice. Okay, so open the inkling girl on top of the mesh cap, select the mesh cap, and then zero to the right. And also remember, the order is very important. You cannot drag the mesh cap on top of the inkling and then do this. It gets it gets very messed up, oh my god. Uh, so don't do that uh, if you don't want to make horror. <laughs> do it in the right order. There we go. Uh, so now I also want to change the skin of the hat. So right click, skin. Yeah, this one. So then to finish off, we're gonna change the leg wear for her. And it's very easy with these new models. Uh, just right click, set body groups pants and here you have all of them and also uh, you can see the line here doesn't match with the hair anymore and that is also an easy fix so right click element viewer model materials and here it's one of these so since i have the first pants it's probably the first one here in the list but you can go through these and find the one you have and i'm gonna go with blue on this one as well so then go back to animation set editor i forgot you can change the skin tone of the character if you right click set skin and here like that and now our character is done so <laughs> don't forget to save so hold control and press s which is the shortcut for saving or you can just go to file and save here. So now we're gonna post the character. And also if you're experiencing lag, for me I don't have any lag right now, but let's say you have, uh, you can right click and disable lighting, which will probably increase your FPS a bit, but I don't have any issues with that, so I'm gonna enable it again. So now we're gonna post the character. So just select your character and put it on the ground, uh, I guess here. Okay, I just noticed something. Uh, this, is, this is clipping and if that happens to you, it's not hard to fix. You can see this is the hair, so we have to go to the hair here, unknown, and find the right one. Or if you don't want to go through the list, you can hold control and you can see all of the points here. So it's probably the scaler? Yeah, it is. Okay. <laughs> you can see the scaler here. Uh, so now we can uh, move it in. There we go. Now it's fixed. Okay, so now we can pose. Oh my god. I'm gonna start with the legs. Here, expand legs. And here are all of the points for the legs. Or, once again, you can hold control and find it here. But you'll probably see me use the list more because I'm more used to using it. So, yeah. Make sure you adjust everything so it looks good. The only tips I have for posing is try to do the posts yourself in real life or maybe look at some references. Either way, it'll take some time to get good at posing and even I'm not good at posing so yeah, we're all in the same boat. So don't feel bad if your first poster doesn't have godlike posing that is unrealistic expectations. And also to select the whole body, just select the upper one here. So you'll switch between the move tool and the rotate tool a lot. And when working on the arms, I like to disable the hair because it's usually in the way. So just click on the eye icon here. Or if you have the regular Splatoon hair, you just right click on the inkling model, set body groups, hairstyle and disable it. But now I ha had it disabled already, so now I... There we go. So now the hair isn't in the way, so it's gonna be easier to pose. And also when posing, don't forget to post the fingers, because if you don't, you're gonna regret when you look back, so <laughs> please do it. So just go to fingers, and here are all of the fingers, and it is very annoying to do the fingers, but it's worth it, so please do it. <laughs> Okay, so now... Okay, I'm gonna <laughs> enable the hair. Okay, so now we have an inkling just standing here. And... Uh, oh wait, I need to... 
<laughs> okay, I also need to pose uh, the hair, because now we can see it's kind of going in this direction. It looks frozen, which doesn't look good, so I'm gonna fix it. So if you have the regular hair, expand the inkling and go to unknown, and then go all the way down to... Here is where you can adjust the hair. But if you have the, the Splatoon 3 hair, go to the individual model here, expand it, and go to unknown here, and here you have everything. And since I have Splatoon 3, we're gonna adjust it here. There we go, just a simple standing pose. But the facial expression is kind of boring and we haven't changed it at all, so I think we need to do it. So select the inkling, and then down here you can change the eyes. And if you scroll down, way down, here are all the facial expressions you can change, and it is quite a lot. You can see those that have a little uh, streak or dash here, those you can adjust, and you can see... The tongue sticks out. <laughs> I'm gonna start with the mouth, so I'm gonna go through and see what looks good. And if you scroll up a bit, you can see here eyelid upper, lower, and that is so you can uh, close the eyelids if you want to do that. Here, cheek, which will like move up the cheek, so, so it looks more like she's smiling. There we go. So, save again. And now we haven't done anything to the camera, which we should probably do. So select it up here, and then go to the right viewport and move it in place. We can zoom in a bit. Actually, we can go here to lenses and... Uh, uh, and pick a set lens, so maybe 35 or maybe even 50. Then we have to go back a bit. And now we can see the pose. I think I need to adjust the pose a little bit. Yeah, a little bit, okay. So yeah, I think I need to adjust uh, the pose a bit. Now that is looking pretty good. We can adjust the camera a little more by selecting it, moving around here. We can also hold R to rotate it, so we can have some kind of interesting uh, rotation. I'm gonna rotate it slightly, only a tiny, tiny bit. So, save again. And since it's Splatoon, and we are on a Splatoon map, uh, we probably want to add some uh, ink. If you don't have it, go to the workshop, search for Splatoon ink, or ink... Yeah, something like that. And then add a new model, and then rescan, remember. And then search for ink. Ground, I think it's called. Yeah, ink ground. Then we probably want to match it with the hair. So go to the inkling, right click, show an element viewer, model, materials, uh, copy it from uh, the eyebrows. Right click, copy, go back, go to the ink ground, uh, add override materials, right click again, show an element viewer, model, materials, and here ink splat, and then paste it here. And, the, and if it doesn't work, just wait a bit for it to reset. There we go. And then try again. There we go. And then go back again. And now we have our ink ground. So now we're gonna just put it in place. And if you want to increase the size of it, expand it. Expand body. And here, root transform. And then right click on it. Add scale control to transforms. And now select transform scale. And here, you can adjust it. So I want it slightly larger, like that. Then maybe put it somewhere here. And then I'm gonna copy it, so right click, copy animation set, then right click here on the empty list, and paste. Uh, like that. And I think I want to add some more props, maybe a crate slash box, and specifically from Splatoon. So once again, if you want that, go to the workshop and search for like Splatoon props. Uh, so Splatoon crate, I think it's called. Yep, crate. Uh, Small. Oh my, okay, <laughs> okay, it's quite big actually, so good that I picked the small one. But either way, we could have just resized it. Uh, so I'm gonna put it somewhere here. That's actually quite perfect. <laughs> I'm gonna copy it and make a smaller version closer to her. So root transform and add scale control transforms. Uh, scale it down. So there we go. And don't forget to save. Control S. So it's looking quite good now, but we're still not done. We also need to add some lighting. To do that, you first need to enable lighting if you have it disabled. You can see the check mark. And to add some light, you just go to the list here, right click, and new light. And <laughs> that is very bright. Actually, I'm gonna first, I'm gonna delete it and first show you something. If you go to the camera up here and select it, you can see you get some settings here. And here, tone map scale will change the brightness of the map. You can see if I turn it down, it gets quite dark, and up is brighter. Yeah, that's fine. So now, lighting. So right click, new light. Since I'm gonna mimic, like, sunlight, I think I want to make the light slightly warm. And to do that, you get some settings here. Uh, so just scroll down, and here, take out some blue, and take out some green. So we're not adding blue and green, we're removing it. And as you can see by the color, you can see it's quite yellow now. Here is the intensity, which 
Well, as it says, it changes the intensity of the light, increase the FOV, because it's a sun, of course it's gonna be big, and also a tip, right click on the light, and then enable light thrust them, which will make it easier to work with the light, because you can see these lines, so you can know which direction it's going in. I think I want to increase the radius, and also, the radius doesn't show up in the preview here, you have to actually go to the clip editor, and then you can see the shadows and light becomes softer, I guess, but when you're in the clip editor, you cannot change anything, you have to go to the motion editor again. And you can see there's a lot of bloom, it's like glowing. If you like that, then <laughs> it's good, but if you don't, you can go to the camera, here, bloom scale. Actually, I want a tiny, tiny bit of bloom. Also, when you have placed down your light, don't forget to right click and disable light thrust them, because otherwise you will see the, the lines, which doesn't look good, so disable, there we go. Uh, you can only have 8 lights with uh, shadows, enable uh, or disable shadows. If you have too many of them, you'll see too many shadow lights. If you have a light that doesn't need shadows, I'm gonna show you the difference. Here's a shadow, if I disable it, so now there's no shadow. If you have a light that doesn't need shadows, disable it, because you don't want to run into the issue of having too many shadow lights. Okay, I'm quite happy with this, so I'm gonna save. So now I have in my mind that the sun will be, like, somewhere here. So that's why the shadows are in uh, this direction and whatever. And then to finish off the lighting, I'm gonna go to camera, adjust the tone map scale, something like that. Then I'm gonna add a fake sun. So right click, new light, then scroll down, then make it more yellow, I guess. And now for the important part, right click, enable volumetrics, which will, like give it fog i guess and then i'm gonna put it up in the sky to simulate a sun okay that looks pretty good i'm gonna adjust the intensity a little bit also adjust the volumetric intensity and i think that's pretty good so now i want to add some blur in the background so go to camera go to focal distance and drag the slider so so this pink square is inside the, the character kind of like uh, that and then you can adjust the aperture i'm gonna put it at max so you can see the difference so then to see the difference you have to go to clip editor and here you can see it's very blurry and i think that's too much so i'm gonna go back and drag it down a bit so maybe like there yeah that's a lot better and maybe tweak the tone map scale and also i think i want to make the sun a bit less yellow yeah that is better and i also want to go back to camera and probably want to disable bloom entirely i think it's a bit too much that is better so now we're gonna right click on the viewport render settings and put this at 1024 which will remove this grain so if we go to clip editor and wait a bit you'll see that it's gone so this is how it's gonna look like when we're done so now we're gonna save and we're happy with it, so it's time to export it. But first, we're gonna close SFM and open Steam. So now we're here, and we're gonna go to the cog here, Manage, and then Properties, and then Launch Options. We're gonna type in this, which will set SFM's resolution to 4K. But if your computer can't handle it, you can set it to 1080p. But at least try with 4K first. If it doesn't work, then turn it on to 1080p. If 1080p doesn't work, then you can just skip this entirely, which is then 720p. But my computer can handle it, so I'll set it at 4K. And then close and launch SFM. Then you'll get this message, but it's nothing to worry about, so just click OK. And then open recent. Since we're using 4K now, SFM is gonna be quite laggy, so that's why we didn't enable it at first, because we don't wanna work in lag. But now you can see the poster's looking good, so it's time to export it. So go to file, export, and movie. And why are we gonna choose movie instead of posters? Because posters kinda broken. It does work, but some stuff is a little weird. So if you can, choose movie. If it crashes while rendering, then pick poster. And then choose your output path. Then export it as an image sequence. PNG or JPEG, but PNG is better. No separate WAV file. 4K. If not, then 1080p or 720p. Duration, put it at custom. 
then seconds to frames, then this at 0, and this at 1. And this will render out one frame of the quote unquote animation, which is just a poster. So then we can export movie. And this might take some time, so I'll cut it out. There we go, so if you're not gonna edit the poster, you're done! But still keep watching, because I have some stuff I want to say at the end. The program we're gonna use is paint.net, and if you don't have it, I'll have it in the description. It's free, so no worries. So now we're gonna do some simple but effective editing. So what I like to do is go to adjustments, and brightness and contrast, and just tweak it a bit to make it a bit better, like that. And then I also wanna go again to adjustments, and hue and saturation, and just up the saturation a bit to make it a bit more colorful. Not too much, we're not making a YouTube thumbnail, <laughs> but just a tiny bit more, like that. And then we also wanna add our watermark, so go down here and add a new layer, then pick uh, whatever color you want. I'm gonna go with the white, and then go to tools and pick the text tool, and then font, go with uh, whatever font you want. I'm gonna go with... Uh, this one looks interesting. Increase the size by either scrolling or the drop-down menu. I like to type out my Twitter tag, so we're gonna, so we're gonna write at Feloliver1, and then put it in the corner, maybe here, like that. And then since we have it on layer 2, we can go here to properties, and decrease the opacity to make it a bit transparent, and then press OK. And now if we zoom out, it looks pretty good. And then to save it, go to file and save as, and then save it somewhere, and make sure you have the file format PNG or JPEG, because .pdn is a paint.net project file, so I'm gonna go with the PNG and then name it EPIC, because this poster is EPIC. <laughs> okay, then just click OK, and then flatten. And now we're done! So that is how to make a Splatoon poster in SFM, and also how to do some simple editing. And I hope this tutorial was helpful with, like, the new hair and the new models, because from my previous tutorial, this time we used some new models and also, of course, the Splatoon 3 hair. And of course, a lot of new people have probably come to the channel and want to know how to make a poster. So if you're wondering something or have a suggestion, you can always write a comment. Or you can join our Discord, because yes, we have one now. And uh, we also have a help channel, so if you need help with SFM or just about anything art related, you can go there and get help from multiple people. And that is everything I have to say. <laughs> like, comment and subscribe, I don't say that very often, but yeah, thanks. And uh, I don't have anything else to say, so thanks so much for watching and bye!